I'm Aileen from AileenCooks.com and on my channel I share recipes, hence the Aileen Cooks, but I also share about homeschooling and all kinds of things about my life. I'm a stay-at-home mom of four and I homeschool my three older kids. Today I'm going to share all about our morning time routine. This is an open collaboration with Jessica from The Wall Duck Way and Abby from Rooted in Rest. So you can click the link below and see the whole playlist of all of the homeschool parents that are sharing their morning time routine this month. So my morning time routine, um, as I said, I have three kids. They're in fifth grade, third grade, and kindergarten, and I also have a toddler. And our morning time routine kind of varies depending on the day. We alternate between different subjects, so I'm just going to share them all with you. So the first thing we do before we actually get into our morning basket is we start every morning with a movement activity. Usually it's Go Noodle. It's generally something on YouTube. My kids like freeze dance. They like cuckoo kangaroo, but mostly Go Noodle. That's what we do. So they each get to pick a video or two. They move their bodies and then that kind of helps them to settle in and try and have calmer bodies during morning time. Um, and then during the read aloud portion, I do let my kids do something with their hands. They can build Legos if they're quiet or draw a picture or something along those lines while I'm reading. So after our movement activity, we start every day with calendar and we've been using these my calendar books i got them at rainbow rainbow resource for five or six dollars and i got one for each child but i just have one here to show you so every month we'll just look at april it has a coloring page which my kids aren't crazy about but sometimes they want to color it so they have a coloring page it features the season and then every month also has a different thing that they track so for this one, it's the wind direction. And the back of the book actually has like a teacher section that gives you tips on how to teach this. So they advise like putting like um, a scarf outside to test the wind direction. So they track it all month um, and they answer these questions below. I have my older children answer these questions. My kindergartner, it's optional. And then at the end of the month, they have a different graph that they fill out. So I think this is really great because they're learning about the months, different things in nature, the weather, and then also different graphs. So you can see this, this type of graph and it changes every month. So every month they get to experience a new graph. They really, really like this. You can see this one's filled out. This is my kindergartner's book. This one's filled out. We did answer the questions below. So we start every day with this. It takes about 10 minutes. It's really quick, less than 10 minutes, really. 10 minutes if we're doing the graph, but the every day, it's just like they open it, they fill it out, they go outside for a minute, fill it out, and then we move on. So after calendar book, we usually do a picture book or two. Um, I have a whole stack of picture books that I borrow from the library every month. Once we've gotten through those, I let them take turns picking a picture book from our home library. So this is Blueberries for Sal. We read this one in conjunction with our study on Maine. After picture book, we go into our read aloud. Right now we're reading Frindle. So I'll read one to two chapters depending on the book and how long the chapters are and also kind of getting a sense of how long my kids are going to sit. Sometimes they beg for more chapters and other times they're just really wiggly and they're not feeling it and that's okay. That's the beauty of homeschool. We just take it day by day. So after the chapter book, we go into our state study, and this is actually traveling the states from Jessica at the Waldock Way. This is the student notebook. I also have a teacher's manual with QR codes for videos and crafts and stuff like that. We primarily do the videos, and my kids will fill it out, fill out the information sheet. So for Arizona, there's a flag coloring page with the flag example. There's a coloring page, stuff for like state birds and flowers. My kindergartner usually does the coloring page and my older kids will fill out these tops. So capital city, larger cities, named for statehood date and order. And this takes us about 20 minutes, including the videos. They really, really love the videos and they look forward to it every day. Um, so we do that. And this 50 states book goes along with that. So my older kids will use this as reference to fill out the information if they didn't get it from the video. After
literature states we alternate between science and history. Right now our science is this ocean unit study, again from the Waldoc Way. I have a teacher's manual with QR codes. We watch the videos. There is, oh, just kidding, this is the teacher's manual. There, um, there is some explanation in here. I don't tend to use this. I tend to just use the videos because I have one kiddo who's a visual learner, but then I will also print out worksheets for them, like a word search. There's fill in the blanks. There's all kinds of activities. So we'll work on this and it takes about 20 to 30 minutes depending on the day. Um, so we'll do that. Alternately, if we're not doing science, we'll do history. And for history, we're using History Quest United States. So I will alternate each day between reading a chapter in the book or doing a history hop, which is like a story that goes with the chapter. So we'll do a chapter one day and then history hop the next day. And I try and do that, both of those each once a week. And then here's the teacher's manual that goes with it. And so sometimes there's activities in here that we'll include. And there's also questions in here that I can ask them about the the chapters, which is primarily what I use it for. Now we're getting into the items that I cycle through. I'd like to say I do them every week, but I don't get to them every week. But these are things that I want to add into our homeschool that are important to me, but we don't always have time. And so I'm going to show you those next. So this book is Breathe Like a Bear. We've been slowly working through this book since last year and it just has different mindfulness activities and deep breathing activities, which I'm trying to teach my children and also work on for myself because we can always grow, right? So we work on this maybe once a week. And again, we cycle through these. The next is Exploring Nature. Now this is similar to Exploring Nature with children. It's by the same person raising little shoots, but this is 365 days of nature journaling. And I like this because I just open a day like the 25th of October and it just gives us a nature prompt for that day. So I don't have to worry about missing things. I can just pick up whenever we have time and I feel like it and the kids want to journal and then they have little journals and they'll go outside and do the nature prompt. Now, the thing with this, and the reason why we don't get to this that often is because my kids will spend an hour outside nature journaling. And so I love that and they spend lots of time outside, but I do have to get to the other schoolwork after morning time. So we do this when I know we don't have anything in the afternoon so we can spend more time focusing on that. So there's that exploring nature around the year. Another thing that we do, we try and do weekly is our picture study portfolios. This is from Simply Charlotte Mason. Um, it's on Van Gogh. That's who we're studying this semester, I guess. We did go and see and immerse, do an immersive experience with Van Gogh. We watched some videos um, and watched a biography on him. And then we, about every week, we'll study a different picture. And this includes a booklet on teaching picture study and prompts to ask your kids. They really like um, hide and describe. And so we'll spend a minute or so staring at the picture and then we cover it up and they get to take turns telling what they remember about the picture. So we do that a lot. So that's our picture study. Another thing we do about weekly is we get different letters in the mail. This is an American heritage adventure. It goes along with our US history. And I'll just open it and show you. So here's the letter. It's really colorful, double-sided, and then it usually comes with something. This is a postcard. We also get the regular American Heritage letter, and we also get Francis and Friends, which is my kids' hands-down favorite, but I didn't have one because we already read it, um, and I don't save them. But Francis and Friends is a letter about a different animal. It's written by Francis. He's a goat. He lives on this farm and he writes a story about meeting a different animal every month. It also comes with stickers for each kid. So they absolutely love that. But these are good too. And I really love that they tie in with our U.S. history. The last thing I want to talk about that we do include in our morning time, I would I try and do it once a week. My kids would love if we did it every day is games. We use a lot of games. I have one here to show you, which is a Professor Noggins card game about U.S. history. We also do a lot of scrambled States of America to go with our 
geography, um, or just simple games like card games like Rat Attack Cat, things like that. So we'll do that sometimes either as a warm up after we do our morning exercise or in between ending off morning time and going into our regular studies. So that's it for our morning time. Thank you for watching my channel. And if you like homeschooling content, I plan on adding more in as the year progresses and also participating in these collabs every month. So I'd love for you to give me a follow and I'll also have that recipe content occasionally as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.